Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. I had a pretty interesting experience today. I was at my place of employment and people started calling my name. I came over and on the floor was this tiny little guy. Tiny little snake. They were worried that it might be dangerous and of course I recognized very quickly that it was not a rattlesnake. The only kind of venomous snake you can find in my area is the Great Basin Rattlesnake. I knew it wasn't one of those and I also recognized it wasn't a garter snake which is one of the common snakes you can find around my area. Generally the most common snakes to see are wandering garter snakes, Great Basin Rattlesnakes, and gopher snakes. And the pattern on this little one, he's being very shy now, the pattern on this little one reminds me a lot of a gopher snake but it's just too small. And so I was puzzling about it, did a little research, and I believe I have determined that this is indeed a western yellow-bellied racer. Now, it's not yellow-bellied yet, but the interesting thing about this species is that they change color and pattern quite a bit as they grow, like some of the other closely related racers. Now, this species and subspecies is Coluber constrictor mormon, and uh, specifically the western yellow-bellied. I've seen the adults. I've actually seen three specimens of this species in my whole life. The first one I ever saw was an adult that I caught as a, as a kid right next to my house and it immediately bit me. And it was green, uniformly green on the um, dorsal surface and then uniformly yellow on the, the ventral surface or the belly. And that's what they uh, grew up to be. They're fairly common in, in large areas of the West, but they're not seen as often as some of the other snakes because they're pretty fast. But uh, the next one I saw was a young juvenile that looked much like this a few years ago up in the canyon near our house. And then the, this, of course, is the third one. So it has a beautiful pattern. And, uh, ooh, and it has quite the attitude, as you can see, just like the adult. And that's not the first time this one has bitten me when I first rescued it from the floor. It also bit me several times. Of course, can't even, it doesn't hurt at all. You can barely feel it. But uh, they don't make particularly good pets, from what I understand. They, they tend to be pretty high strung. They don't tend to relax or tame down very well. And they require, they tend to like to eat things like lizards and not necessarily terribly fond of mice or things like that. So something like this doesn't have a lot of great pet potential even though it is a beautiful snake and will grow to be a very different looking but beautiful snake. I'm not going to attempt to keep it. I am going to release it in the habitat where I found the other specimen of this species. can't release it back where I found it unfortunately because that would be in a lounge area on a university campus indoors. Very strange place to find this little guy but uh, so I'm going to release it in a more suitable habitat. But it's a beautiful snake and it was kind of a fun uh, episode of incidental herping, so I thought I'd share it with you. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. This one's like worthy. <laughs> This time probably. Yeah, this time. So, has a beautiful pattern. And, uh, ooh, and it has quite the attitude, as you can see. 